Good morning, everybody. We're back. Chef Dan here. Uh, my ultimate one-person kitchen has been on TV or on uh, online for a couple of years now. But we are going to crowd it up with one more person. It's my very good friend, Chef Kit, Keith Jones. Uh, just joining us for breakfast. We got some stuff to talk about after breakfast, so I thought it'd be fun to have him come in and um, play along with us. So we're having chicken fajitas today. I've got some chicken breasts. We're going to do a vegetable medley. We're going to use whatever we got on hand, as usual. Hit it with some fajita spice. I've got some brown rice cooked off that we're just going to reheat. And then we're having, uh, for our sauce today, it's seven second salsa, which Keith is going to make. So all he needs is a cutting board, a knife, his ingredients, and a food processor. And the whole idea is you put everything in the machine and you run it for about seven seconds. And you've got nice, fresh, delicious salsa without a lot of knife skills work. The knife is only going to help him get everything kind of small enough to go in the food processor. As I always like to say, food processors need a little bit of a head start. You give them that, don't put round things in there, and you're off to the races. So we're just gonna go ahead and start it today um, by getting our brown rice going. And um, Keith is just gonna keep an eye on me, keep me out of trouble here. So again, brown rice cooked, I haven't even taken it out of the uh, rice cooker bowl. So I'm just gonna put it up for three people and then I'll be having the rest later tonight to the next couple days for my breakfast. I'm just going to pop this in the oven with a little bit of water just to reheat. Not even going to cover it and get that hot. No cover because I need it to go faster. Got some fresh oregano over there, Keith? Yeah, a little fresh oregano. And we're going to go by that uh, seven second rule for sure. So yeah. Dan, I want you to tell me, is yeah. this recipe by chance in your mix, match, make, take, <laughs> cookbook? Because we have to talk about that. You got some awesome recipes in there. I know. It, uh, oddly enough, it's not. Uh, I have some really nice salsa recipes in there. Uh, pico de gallo. But basically, it is and it isn't. And the way I say it is because... It's just a pico de gallo that you're making. Okay. The only difference is instead of everything diced up, which is how I have it in the cookbook, everything is pureed in the food processor, or ground small in the food processor. So it's just a pico de gallo that's been ground up. That's all it is. Got it. Okay. So I'm just going to get started on my veggies first because i um, got to make sure I have enough for everybody. And I'll get on a different cutting board for the chicken. Get everything nice and thin, that's the rule. For breakfast, we want everything to cook quick. I got a major league skillet for today. I, 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 I absolutely love here. that. I love that skillet. That big cast iron? It's a must have in everybody's kitchen, no doubt. Oh yeah, well I, you can see if you look at my pot rack, I've got about five different sizes. And frankly, I use them all. Um, they all have a place in my uh, regular repertoire of cooking. My favorite stove that easy to clean, gets hot, stays hot, holds heat, all those things you like. So I'm just taking this asparagus. We're going to have a little asparagus in our fajitas today. I'm going to cut that nice and thin. Very nice. Okay, so I could tell you a funny story about a cast iron skillet if you... I'm ready. I don't know, I don't know if your crowd is ready for that this morning, but I can certainly <laughs> tell you a funny story. In this day and age, everybody's ready for a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in my family, these cast iron skillets are a weapon, okay? So my uncle... You trying to give me ideas? My uncle used to like his sauce, if you know what I mean. Kitchen, they had bottles everywhere, right? Okay. Some even used to fit in his pocket, and it was the gin. It was the hardcore gin. So when he got a little inebriated, okay? Uh, I didn't would, know you knew four syllable words. He would, That's he, five syllables, never he, mind. He would mess with my aunt and she would be like, honey, you better leave me alone. I don't want to take it no more. <laughs> and honey kept going. So guess what my aunt did? Put a dent in the skull. Oh and my skull. God, it was a contact sport. She <laughs> hit him hard and they lived right across the street from the police station. Oh, great. So my man took a, 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 a nice ice pack from the house, walked across the street, and checked himself in because he didn't want to get hit no more. <laughs> <laughs> so that was his solution, just go and get arrested. Oh, it man. It was less me, painful. Let, let me go on across the street and cool off. <laughs> <laughs> 
you know, all the years I worked for that Belgian chef Henri, he never threw anything at me. Well, you he not. never hit me. He never, but he got, he went through that. He told me stories about, you know, chef so mad at me, grab him by the earlobe and squeeze until he started to bleed. Oh, Stuff yeah. like that. You know, pants flying across the kitchen. He, yeah, he never did that. He yelled and screamed. He was a major league yeller and screamer. But he never he never physically hurt us. You were lucky. Yeah, I know. That was the old days, right? Yeah. How absolutely. many European chefs are even in this country anymore? You know, it's all when I when you and I well you worked under an American chef. But you know, when I was in San Diego training, all the cool jobs were European chefs. There were no American chefs right. in the mix. Um, my that's all changed. Right. So, hope you're hungry, Keith. I usually make a nice rainbow of vegetables every morning. This is our rainbow today. I've got a couple of greens, a little red, twice, onions and peppers red, a little uh, yellow onion. And then I'm just gonna throw in a little bit of shaved cauliflower just to finish this off. This is gonna go in the pan pretty quick. So, yeah, nice. as I said, what I do now, Keith, is I just shave the cantaloupe to make it thin, and if I get some shrapnel, some little beads, I don't care, I just throw those in too. Those come up crispy. So. Well, I know on some of your previous uh, recordings, you always tell the, uh, your guests to eat the rainbow. Eat the rainbow. So. Doesn't have to be hard because all these pieces, veg, you know, all these parts are gonna go in the fridge for tomorrow. So, you know, that way I can keep everything going. Still have stuff to make a little dinner tonight. Keep it simple. You know, I'm trying to keep my life simple these days, buddy. I'm I got right there nice, with you. Well, I got a nice rash on my shoulder from all that radiation. And uh, and then, oh yeah, by the way, you'll feel fatigued after the radiation. It's like, dude, I'm already fatigued. What are you gonna give me some more? I don't think you've updated our breakfast viewers on oh, this situation. We should probably do yeah, that. Yeah, I had a tumor on my shoulder. Uh, cancer tumor, uh, caught it early, radiated it, gone, um, but there's fallout, and the fallout after effects, which you don't really, you go through radiation at first, it's like, what's the big deal? This machine goes over, you don't feel anything, nothing happens, everybody's nice to you. And you go, okay, cool, yeah, that's fine. And then, afterwards, where they radiate you, it starts to redden. Uh, you get a rash. I've been putting cream on it three times a day, and um, increasing my fatigue level. Isn't that lovely? Mm -hmm. So that's just all I need is more fatigue. Anyway, um, I'm just dealing with the after effects. And uh, the nice thing is the tumor shrank. It looks like it's gone. Well, congratulations yeah, it's about, on that. It's like take a picture of a golf ball cut in half and just sitting on top of my shoulder. And of course, we all thought it was arthritis at first. Listen, I'm going to fire up two pans, everybody. I'm going to do the chicken in one and the veggies in another. So since i got a lot of veggies, I'm going to do the veggies in the big cast iron. And I'll do the chicken in my little uh, non-stick that we'll do the eggs in. So I don't want to crowd my pan too much. A nice hot oil, a little shimmer on there. And let's just get the bench scraper, pick up this whole board. And let's see how much I can get in the pan and not on the floor. That's always the trick. Yeah. We worked with this one cook. He was a mess, man. He was just, everything ended up on the floor. And Henry couldn't put up with that stuff at all. He'd go, oh, you are growing a garden. He said, well, the, the dishwasher is going to sweep the floor anyway. He goes, I don't care. Don't make a mess. Throwing a garden on the floor. I like, uh -huh. I like Chef. I like Chef. <laughs> okay, Chef, you're the boss. Whatever you say, Chef. We're hitting our uh, veggies with turmeric, salt, and pepper. I'm going to heat the chicken with fajita seasoning today because we aren't having chicken fajita. So basically, this is just a fajita vegetables on steroids. I mean, you got the classic onions and peppers. But then I just hit that stuff with a little cauliflower and a little asparagus and a little zucchini to get my own nutrition going. Now let's get the chicken cut up and get that in the pan. So 
Remember, the thinner it is, the faster it cooks. So I'm gonna cut this chicken as thin as I possibly can, just like fajitas. I'm gonna cut a little on the short side too, just so we don't have to spend too much time with knife and fork. And what else could you use besides that chicken? Anything. Pork sliced thin, beef sliced thin, shrimp would be great. Uh, I've done this with, um, you could also then get a little carried away because that vegetable medley will hold up so well. Uh, I've done this with uh, bison burgers. Just make little bison patties or sausage patties and just serve vegetable fajitas with the protein. Very nice. but the whole idea here is we want to get everything we need and make breakfast our biggest meal of the day. Which means protein, clean not lean. You like that line, Keith? I'm clean not, not lean. Not. I don't want lean, I want some fat on there. You notice I didn't defat this chicken. Right. Um, fat is flavor. Fat is flavor, fat is nutrition. Chicken skin, oh, gift of the gods. And then a, a nice rainbow of vegetables, whole grain, some flavor. How you doing on the flavor, by the way? I'm, 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 I'm working on it. You got your foot in it? It's yeah. coming through. I got my foot in it, chef. I know, I'm hurrying. <laughs> hey, I mean, I, you gotta have that done before I cook the eggs, man. So you better, you know. I'm coming through. All right, here we go. And then we're gonna cook our chicken separate. Get that pan nice and hot. Actually, we're in pretty good shape. No worries. Uh, we're gonna do something a little different today. We've done some, we did our soft, slow eggs last week with the, cream, with the uh, goat cheese. Today I am going to endeavor to do six eggs over easy all along. You the man. Any yolks that break, man. any yolks that break will be mine. Okay. Yep. You like that? Good. <laughs> I love that. So all I want to do with the chicken is burn it out and leave it alone. I want to get a, the reason I want that big skillet is I want that chicken flat on the pan so everything's cooking the same. And of course I know, oh, Dan's using non-stick. Oh, he's not, he's not using a high performance pan. Well, I am going to use this for my eggs. So that way I can get a little double duty out of it. And this time I'm going to hit it with my own blend of fajita seasoning, which if you want, we'd be happy to send that out. So all you got to do is request it and I will send you my fajita blend. And the nice thing too is if you want, you can take that recipe, take it to Savory Spice, and they'll blend it for you. And only charge you for what you take away, so you don't have to buy 12 jars and stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, one of the nice things about Savory, like when I go to Savory Spice for saffron, I don't say give me a gram or two grams or half an ounce, I say give me 20 bucks worth. And then they weigh it out, take my discount, put a little bit more in, and off we go. But anyway, that, that's the fajita season I am using now. Let's see, 1986. Put that stuff together. That's been a while. Uh, this fajita spice was actually created by me for the U.S. Olympic volleyball team. We were doing a fundraiser at our country club back in San Diego. In San Diego? Yeah, mid 80s. Very so good. So uh, they wanted fajitas on the menu. We were doing a big fundraiser. And they were playing right on our tennis court. <laughs> These guys were good. I mean, you know, it's one thing to watch volleyball on TV, but when you see those guys, how tall, how athletic they are, how hard, how fast they move, it's amazing. Unbelievable. Like, yeah, that's not me. Spoons are right here to taste and adjust. Okay. And we're uh, we're five minutes from breakfast. I got the, I got the, I got the sauce is ready, chef. I got the sauce. You know, it's not ready yet. You haven't tasted it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then, you know, part of my world, because, you know, I have to, I'm working on my home kitchen. I have to put everything away. Yeah, you got to clean as you go. Clean as I go. Yeah. You don't want to get in trouble. I don't want to get in any, no, I don't want to get in any more trouble than I'm already in. <laughs> That's different. There's getting in trouble and there's avoiding more trouble. So, as you can see, it's the ultimate one person kitchen. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't really design it this way. It's just, you know, suddenly I'm. All I need suddenly is. Suddenly I'm doing these videos going, you know what? Everything's right where I want it. I just need some salt. But if I try to put one more person in here, everything is not right where I want it. 
All right, these are ready to turn down, add our power green for the day. We're gonna use it to last this crossbow bag. And let those wilt nicely. Don't have to add any other flavor right today because I got keys here. Make it seven seconds also. How long does that process for you? About five seconds right now. Yeah, that's because you're a professional chef. You're able to make things go way faster than got, everybody else. Isn't that about right? I got two seconds to spare. <laughs> you can get a few more pulses, is that it? I can get a couple more pulses. Yes, yes. <laughs> So all I'm really trying to do now is get these chickens turned over. I'm not trying to do a lot of stirring on these. Um, I'm really trying to cook them just like a chicken, you know, regular chicken breast. Put it on one side, put it on the other, take it out. Um, so I'll throw this chicken in with the veggies, and that'll free up my pan to cook the eggs. So all I really want here, I'm not stirring them, turning them over, getting them flat so that they're all done at the same time without getting overcooked. So there's a method to everything I'm doing. And that's playing with my food. And this chicken is just starting to firm up. Literally just needs a few more seconds. And then we'll get ready to cook some eggs. Over, over medium, I'll pay on your eggs. Yeah, 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 that's perfect. Okay, good. I don't know if I've ever cooked you eggs before. I'm not. I'm 27 not. years, 28 years, I've never cooked you eggs. I'm not a, I'm not your, your typical egg guy. No, no. <laughs> well, you know, you could change and go. You know, you ever think about that? Yeah. You know, I got egg, I got egg issues in my life. Oh, is that right? Were you scarred it as a child? Is that what it was? I, can't, I still, listen, from kid to this day, I cannot eat hard boiled eggs. I can't even stand the smell of them. Well, see, that was what happened. That's where my egg issues come from. Yeah. He's the egg, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dan gags if I put them on a salad. We used to <laughs> cook them. You know, it, it's, it's anywhere, depending on what stove you on, any, anywhere from seven to 10 minutes for the perfect boiled egg. Yeah. Okay? But in my family, it was like 25 to 30, so it was like, <laughs> yeah, and we're ready. Playing, the great film around the We're yoke. ready. Oh, my God. Gray, green, I mean, you, oh. you name it. And it's just oh. like, do I have to eat these? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Tell them the story about what the chef had. How do you want your steak, Keith? Oh, my God. I want my steak well done. I want you to make it like we eat it. Hey, listen. You gonna eat that steak the perfect way it's supposed to be made, and that is medium rare. Okay, chef. Um, these green beans on the plate—they too green. Can 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 you make them like they come out the can? Hey hey, those can <laughs> those carrots are the perfect all dente. You gonna eat them like they supposed to be, just like that. Okay, chef. The uh, rice pilaf—it's too dry. Can I have some gravy for my rice? Hey hey. If you ever call my sauce a gravy again, you'll be fired. Okay, I, I, think, I, think, I think I got it. I yeah, think I got it. Sounds about right. With Henry, you could go. You know, it was always chef. I always had to call him chef. Yes, chef. No, chef. One day I said, his name is Henri. So I said, well, what do you think, Henri? And he goes, oh, Henry is a candy bar. I am the chef. And of course, calling him Hank didn't get us anywhere, so we stopped that real, real you quick. We stopped that real fast. Yeah, that came to an abrupt halt. <laughs> Behind his back, he was horrible Hank. Everybody has a nickname in the kitchen. Yeah. Mine was Goddamn Bam. <laughs> Mine was Hank. Did it again. <laughs> Make another mess. <laughs> oh. My chef would go. He's like, the joke was he was either bragging or complaining. That was, the, that was the course of the day. So he'd make some sauce. Oh, Henry, you did it again. It looked like me. It tastes like me. Like, come on, Hank. Get over yourself. No, 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 no. I make perfection. Don't mess with the chef. Yeah, and then what do we say? 
Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yes, chef. Yeah. Going home week. Fun times for sure. Uh, it, you know, I learned a ton from that man. Exactly. That's the big thing. And you know, every once a year, it was, it was uh, evaluation day, right? You know that. So 364 days a year, you don't know nothing. You're terrible. Hurry up. Oh, that. <laughs> You can't do this. That does not exist. This, that, and the Come evaluation day, you're the best new chef I've ever had. I'm giving you a big raise. Now get back to work. <laughs> yes, chef. A little hot rice. Okay. Drum roll. Ready? Here we go. I'll try to get all these over once. No, I gotta wait. They gotta get a little firmer. <laughs> a little chickening out. You can do it. You well, can on, do chef. it. You can do it. Well, I can if they get a little firmer. Otherwise, I'm going to have uh, stove cleaning issues, and I really want to try to avoid that. You know, a lot of people are intimidated by cooking eggs, and just to see you do that like you do, I think it helps people to uh, overcome their fear. Kudos. That's been my mission for Kudos. the last 20 years. Kudos. Kudos. Teach us, chef. Teach us. How can I make Not your life eggs. easier in your own kitchen? Teach us, chef. Teach us. Yes. Show us how it's done. So remember, these pans are designed to flip. The curve, and the whole idea is to get it at the far end and flip it back toward you. So it is a wrist action. It takes a little practice. If you want to practice this basic idea, put a piece of bread in the pan and keep flipping it until you got it mastered. The reason is if the bread falls on the floor, it's no big deal. If your soft eggs fall on the floor, it kind of gets in your way. All right, chicken fajitas. Nobody's going hungry this morning, I can tell you that. In fact, I think I got my afternoon snack already planned here. So last, you should have seen it last week, you had Laura here, who got my website, and I make this huge breakfast. I go, oh God, I feel bad putting that much food in front of Jody and Laura, and I look back, the plates are licked clean. Holy shit, they did everything. Yeah, we did. Quite the deal. So, yep. that's why these portions, are nice and big. We're going to put the eggs on the rice today. Get over there, you. Oh, this is going to be tricky. No, you could do it. Yeah, I know. You no. could do it. Uh -huh. It's not my first culinary rodeo. There we go. And here's that seven second. Okay, let's just put that in a bowl. Here we go. And people can help themselves. Yeah, everybody can help themselves today. What all did you put in there, Keith? So we have our peppers, onions, garlic, tomatoes, oregano, cumin, chili powder, lime, and a little love. We always cook with a little love. Yeah. And typically, I, a lot of my sauces I make without cilantro because so many people in the world don't like cilantro. One in seven, I think it tastes like soap. So I've just kind of gravitated towards, oftentimes, if I don't know everybody personally, background of this, I just make my sauces with uh, right. chili powder and cumin instead of cilantro. And uh, don't have to worry about anybody going, Chef, I can't eat that. It tastes like soap. Which is never any fun. So there is breakfast today. I don't know how we did on time. I don't care anymore. I just cook and eat. Um, if you're worried about time, then stop. Um, when you're cooking for yourself, when you're making yourself a good, healthy, big breakfast to get you through the whole day, make the time. It takes a half an hour to cook it and eat it. So that's about the amount of time you need to leave yourself. If you're not as fast as I am, and I don't blame it, give yourself 40 minutes, but it's going to last you through the day. You can do a super light lunch. You won't even be hungry until 2 or 3 in the afternoon, and that's a big deal. And it always helps when you have professional help to help you with your flavors and stuff like that. So thanks for watching. A um, couple things real quick. We are back in the school. Um, so we are doing in-person classes, but it, um, so come and check out our calendar. But also I'm starting a series tomorrow, once every Wednesday called Cooking Without Recipes for the rest of the month. So we're gonna talk about, I'm literally gonna start the class by having this counter covered with food with a linen over it. I will not know what I'm making until the class starts. We'll pull that off. We'll talk about the process, I'll verbalize the process of how I walk through each thing. Tomorrow is the French theme, 
And of course, I always say the things or no. What Mediterranean. I don't even know what I'm doing tomorrow. We're doing Mediterranean what? tomorrow. Which one? Mediterranean. Mediterranean, my favorite. Yes. Uh, everybody's favorite food. But there's iconic flavors and they work well together. And we're going to start the series tomorrow. So check that out. I know I'm doing French at some point and Southwestern to wrap up the month. We want that to be successful because I think, number one, if I can help you cook without having to follow a recipe, but just use good techniques, make good food, um, you can really open up that oyster and have uh, the food you like rather than the food somebody else writes. So we'll see you next week, hopefully on time, hopefully on Tuesday, if life doesn't get in the way. Big thanks to Keith for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we'll hope to see you soon. We'll do this again real soon. Thanks, everybody. Bon appetit.